Now I'm sure you're probably wanting to have a Linux installation of your own. If you only have one PC, but you still want to have the opportunity to play with a Linux operating system, it's definitely possible. So we're going to cover some of the various features and requirements when installing Linux on the same machine as a Windows operating system. This is basically called dual booting and will allow us to have access to either Windows or Linux when necessary. Now, as you can probably imagine, because each operating system has its own partition and file system requirements, we're going to run these on separate partitions, but they can be on the same hard drive. As a general rule, you want to load your Windows operating system first and follow that up with a Linux operating system. Now, one of the neat features here is even if you made the mistake of using the entire drive for your Windows operating system, Linux can resize partitions automatically for you and make room for itself on your drive. Now, we're going to want the Linux bootloader to manage the booting of the system. And this is because the Windows operating system doesn't understand Linux at all. So Windows wouldn't have the capability to hand off to Linux if you chose to boot that way. So Linux is actually built with the capability to understand how to pass control to the Windows boot files. So basically when you boot your system up, you'll get a menu that will give you the option to boot into either or. You can modify this boot order by going into the bootloader, depending on which one you have installed, usually through the Linux operating system. And you'll have a timeout setting there, usually around 5 to 10 seconds, that will choose the default option. Most of the time, this is the Linux operating system. And that as well can be changed in the bootloader. Now, you don't necessarily have to set up a bootloader, but if you do, it's generally recommended that you install it to the master boot record. Now, if you choose not to use a bootloader, then you can actually create a boot disk during the installation of Linux and then boot to that disk when you want to go into the Linux operating system. Now, I find that to be kind of annoying, so I generally install to the master boot record and use that bootloader to my advantage. Now, if you are using a bootloader or a boot disk, when booting your system up to choose your operating system, you have the ability to pass off the Windows. Now, when you do that, whatever boot manager Windows is using at the time is going to take over and be the default. So really, the only thing that's going to happen is the OS Choices menu will pop up. You'll get the option if you choose Windows. It's almost like restarting the system back into Windows. So the Linux operating system really doesn't have any play in the Microsoft Windows boot process. So this should give you a pretty good idea of what your requirements and recommendations are when preparing to install the Linux operating system. Coming up, we'll actually perform the installation and let you take a look at how it feels as you move through those processes to get Linux installed on your system.